Defining omega-3 status in a person is very difficult to do from a diet questionnaire, which is historically what people have done. They've just asked, well, how much fish do you eat? How much did you eat yesterday? What was it? How was it cooked? You know, people don't remember this stuff. So what we needed was a biomarker, uh, a something you can measure objectively in the blood that would tell us something about how much omega-3 you've got on board. And so a couple of studies, uh, one in the 1990s by David Siskovic and one in the early 2000s by Christine Albert, both looked at the question of red cell omega-3 fatty acid levels. And red cells were chosen because they are a membrane. The omega-3s take up residence and do their work in membranes. And so measuring the level of omega-3 in a membrane, it makes a lot of sense which we also know correlates with other tissue membranes. Um, and they both found that there was a very strong relationship between the level of omega-3, EPA, DHA, in red cell membranes and risk for sudden cardiac death. Um, the studies were done very differently. Uh, the conclusions were the same. And so that was a strong impetus uh, for me. And again, my, my colleague, uh, Dr. Von Schacke, in 2002, we were uh, sitting, having a beer at a American Heart Association meeting in Chicago and talking about these studies that were fairly new. And we said, it just sort of a light bulb went off and said, this is a risk factor. Omega-3 levels in red cell, they should be considered a risk factor in the same sense that cholesterol is a risk factor. And it should be measured and, and treated like a risk because this, it, other than, as opposed to cholesterol, which requires typically drugs to treat it, this risk factor, a low omega-3 level, we hadn't called it the omega-3 index at that point. It was just red cell EPA DHA. A low level of that can be treated very easily, very safely, and very effectively with diet, supplements. Uh, and so it's easy to address. Uh, and so we set about to actually pull together the literature and make a proposal, write in a paper, a proposal that this marker, red cell omega-3, which we finally called the omega-3 index, uh, should be considered a risk factor. And we, we picked cut points that we thought were appropriate places to start the discussion. Um, because if you're going to propose a, a metric as a risk factor, you've got to say, well, here's a healthy level and here's a not healthy level. You've got to have targets. And so we looked at all the literature we could find and did as much uh, experimental work as we could at the time. And we came to the, the conclusion that an omega-3 index of about 8%, meaning 8% of the fatty acids in the red cell membrane were EPA and DHA. Uh, that would look like a healthy target for a lot of reasons. And something down in the 4%, half of that level was uh, the place where you don't want to be. I mean, it was, so that's what we proposed, um, that this is a risk factor. It ought to be 8%. Uh, you need to, how much omega-3 do you need to get there? Depends on the person, et cetera, et cetera. But the idea, we wanted to get started for the medical community primarily is to start including this test in your annual preventive medicine physical exams for patients. And it's a risk factor that you need to manage just like you'd want to manage cholesterol.